Content Update 29 is now live within Halo Infinite and it brings a lot of new bits of content to play around with and significant changes as well as a secret buff to the Bandit Evo. Now if you wanted a TLDR about everything that changed within this update, well, here you go. Right, new load screen, which looks amazing. And of course that comes with a new bag drop. We have the new 20 tier Spirit of Fire Pass, which is all free for you to unlock, but it does come with a paid version if you want the premium, which comes with an evolved MA5 assault rifle. Cool thing about this new assault rifle, that depending on the coding that you utilize, you can have a customized UI with it, which looks pretty awesome. The user interface is nice and pretty in pink because I'm using the Cyber Showdown coding. And yeah, it looks awesome. A new arena map illusion was added today, which has its own 24 seven playlist. Brand new core to get for free for just logging in the Mark IV armor core, which is reminiscent of the Halo Wars 2 armor set. And the newest addition when it comes to overall armor set is that you can have cross core shoulder now with any character within the game and this season one year one bundle for the optic skin has now become available which you can put on any kind of coating for your spartan forge got a ton of crazy updates and a new palette of covenant items and for the first week of the ultimate challenges you can unlock kai's helmet from the halo tv show riz and vanek's helmets will come out in the later weeks but the longtime viewers on this channel know you don't just come by here for the highlights you come here for the details which if you guys like these informative videos make sure to tap like it's the best way to help out the video and channel let's get right into those details so yes we do have the spirit of fire operation that is live right now now operations are different than the battle pass there's no more battle passes with halo infinite with this update because operations have an expiration date if you do not go into the premium option of the battle pass they will expire completely which the premium option is 500 credits and it does give you that classic assault rifle that you'd want you also can just buy it outright with 2000 credits if you just don't want to grind for it but the challenges are pretty easy you should be able to do it relatively soon how long is this operation going to last well we do now know for example we're here it's going to last until march 5th which that's when cyber showdown 2 will come in and that will last until april 1st so just about a month so a pretty short operation to be honest right there again another free 20 tiers mainly focused around the chimera core which is needs a lot of love especially all the fracture cores need a lot of love when it comes to customization after that right after the Cyber Showdown 3, we have the Yappening 2 come in on April 2nd until April 29th. So again, another four week operation, rather short from what we've had previously. Like I said earlier, we do have the new map of Illusion. The great thing about this one is a social map that right down the middle of the hallway, you are able to go camo completely. But of course, if you shoot, run, do your normal things that would take you out of camo, that's what would happen to you in the middle of the hallway as well. And like I said earlier, there is a 24 seven place. So you actually will be able to play this compared to that Snowfire version that we that I basically didn't ever had a chance to play because it was mixing within the other modes. Multi-use shoulder pads are now in the game as well. So you can cross core to your heart's desire with these shoulder pads. Very excited about this. Opens up so much more forms of customization as you saw earlier within this video. And like I stated earlier, they unlocked the HCS armor and weapon kits for the year one set. So, so I believe it's the pistol as well as the coating themselves are just open to regular customization now, which is fantastic. They did say that the year one bundles have temporarily returned as well, so they will go away. So if you've been wanting that year one coding for the HCS teams, well, now is your chance to get it. As stated here, the year one armor and weapon bundles listed above have expected to roll out of the shop on May 28th. So you do have some time. Big quality of life improvement here actually is the armor hall and performance improvements, because if you guys have been trying to customize your Spartan, it could be quite laggy and quite of a during experience to really go on dive in and customize your spartan well things should be running a quite a bit smoother now for you and like we showed earlier the new background which peak halo art looks amazing tons of new forge updates with new ai toolkits so will have some more expansion on that which is fantastic i believe i saw it was like 116 new items being added into the game as well on top of that covenant palette that we saw earlier the reason why this is so fantastic for not just forgers but for the community in general because 343 is going to be focusing a lot on the forge side of things moving forward in 2020 24 and potentially into 2025 so giving forgers more opportunities to create more exciting things is exactly what the community needs to be able to keep this game fresh and fun as stated earlier there is a change to the bandit evo rifle so this is huge for you ranked players or also people who just play social maybe in big team battle who'd like utilizing that evo or even people who like playing firefight as well so this is a big change for her saying that the bandit evo air angle has been reduced to zero meaning it will no longer have bullets spread as well as known as bloom 
previously so what they stated here to showcase the specific stats and the whole thing basically the minimum air angle was a 0.03 now it's just dead zero so meaning that wherever you shoot that's exactly where the bullet is going to go there's no spread within that and the reticle bloom has been reduced so you won't see any form of animation with it for all my pc friends out there a major update came where it said an issue causing pc with nvidia graphics card to experience extended loading screens on launch has been resolved so you also mentioned about going to the latest recommended driver of 546.01. I definitely experienced this a lot. That's a huge improvement. Now they also had some multiplayer changes come in saying players who have completed all of their unlocked battle passes and operation passes, but have locked battle passes or operations that are incomplete will no longer receive a congratulations message for finishing them after a multiplayer match. Basically a less annoying UI, that's fantastic. Also the team lineup tab of the big team battle match post game carnage report now consistently aligns the selected gamer tag and the arrow over the Spartans displayed on the screen. Again, quality of life improvement, but these little changes add up. Now important thing, we have some gameplay changes coming here as well, not just for the Bandit Evo, but a bunch of other things as well. One being plasma and hard light coils now consistently inflict their expected area of effect damage when destroyed by gunfire. Players can now catch fusion coils thrown at them more consistently in firefight. Firing at the turret of a rocket hog now consistently transfers damage to the entirety of the vehicle like it does with a regular warhog. Good to have that kind of continuity right there for sure. The plasma pistol and ravager can no longer be charged and fired while converting an extraction device. So you gotta pick one or the other. Gotta put some damage or you gotta lay the objective. That's a good change right there. All banished bosses and high value targets can now be healed by the repair field equipment. Down players now receive an on screen notification when they are being revived by a repair field piece of equipment. Doors throughout the map of House of Reckoning now open consistently when approached by players and players can no longer access unintended areas outside of the playable space on the map chasm. We saw a lot of people, especially within infection, utilizing some cheesy tactics to make sure they stay alive. So that's a great change on chasm. And some theater mode improvements as well. And basically all these are just making it so then it's less buggy. Now it will still, I'm sure have a little bit of latency as we see right now, but a lot of the animations or load times when it comes to thumbnails will actually load properly within the game rather than just trying to guess. Uh, I think it was the third game that I played trying to go into theater mode so at least it's improved a little bit there uh, and Zorro mode was also improved again just kind of reducing that latency making it more accurate to what looks like what's happening in the game on the observer mode so when you're watching your hcs modes or just kind of observing your friends well you'll be able to see what exactly what's happening so visual improvements especially around the lighting and brightness of the screen when it came to loading into the game that's a good change right there forge updates when it came to file map and map publishing as well a ton of creator mode tools were updated on top of that. Since this update's gone live, there's been one consistent line of feedback given to 343 about this update. That's about the operations and the store. Because on the free tier of the operation pass, it's a little light. I'm not gonna lie. You have an emblem, XP boost, another emblem, an emblem. You do have a weapon charm, which is kind of nice. That's, a, I'd say, one bit of actual customization within the first five tiers. Uh, and then our XP boost, some more emblems, another weapon charm as well, which does look pretty nice, not gonna lie. You have a multi-use coating here, which is kind of just boring, just kind of gray, like not that exciting, honestly. Probably not gonna be bothering to use that. Not until level 12 is we actually get some armor customization coming with a new set of knee pads, a chest piece as well, a new visor. You also have a coating called the Jade Canopy, which actually does look kind of nice, not gonna lie. Kind of looks pretty sweet, but again, nothing too exciting. Just kind of a pattern that we've seen previously, but just time it's green. Uh, a new belt piece there as well. They have a coating, which again, just kind of bland, really brown, not that exciting. You know, nothing that I'm not gonna be, I'm definitely gonna be using that one, that's for sure. Oh, uh, we do get some shoulder pieces as well when it comes to the customization here and a new helmet with a helmet attachment, which I mean, that's kind of nice, but nothing too exciting there. Compared to the shop over here, though, you do have the Omega team, which is a 3800 credit bundle, which gives you a lot of customization here. Uh, this is probably your best bet if you really want that Omega team. This is what you need to go for right here. And honestly, like a lot of the helmets look very similar to each other, in my opinion. So I'm not too excited about this. Like even like the shoulder pad here, like, yeah, there's a knife on the shoulder pad here. It's very similar where you can get within even in, within the operation. Now you can also get each individual armor set if you want to for 1800 credits each as well. 
You do have the sniper rifle bundle, which finally the sniper rifle is not tied to it an extravagant bundle, though it's still bundled within a bunch of other things that you know, are, are nice, but nothing too crazy here. Like you get the new sniper rifle bundle, which apparently this thing like in lore wise can actually shoot like railgun shots, but uh, this is just like a re regular sniper rifle model, which is kind of a, oh, a bit of a letdown in my opinion. You do get a death effect, but it's very similar to what we've had previously within the game. And also a spawn in effect, again, very similar with that kind of digital wireframe look to it you do get some holographic uh shoulder pads on top of that which honestly are kind of sick not gonna lie i would kind of be down with that as well and on top of that you also do get a coating which again it's very similar to what we've already had with like a green and gold kind of look but this one's a little more tarnished and then right below that you do also have the a weapon charm which again it's like it's all right like nothing too exciting in my opinion but again, again, more, more, and more store customization. But the reason why it's causing so much controversy or discussion is because basically within this whole store item, you get eight different armor cores or sets within the store for you to purchase, where within the operation itself, you don't really get that, you only get one. Especially for how light in content this actually really is. It's not until level 12 is when you actually start getting some stuff you would actually utilize. A lot of it's kind of, especially the first has very filler with like XP boost and emblems, like nothing too exciting there. So basically the gating of that content to be put into the store rather than available for something you can earn within the game has caused a bit of discussion within the community. Let me know what your thoughts are with this update on the comments down below. Do read all the comments and try to reply to some of them as well. If you're curious about what the future of Halo Infinite is going to be in 2024, I recently did a podcast with fellow YouTuber Footed Ghost right here. Guys, please go check out that video and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.